welcome to another episode of Music Crusaders. I'm JJ, and of course, I have my trusty um, co-host, Caleb, here with me. Hello. Today, uh, we are stoked to have uh, Tommaso from the band Universe in My Yard, and we get to talk to him a little bit. Good evening to everyone. Yes, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, too, for the opportunity you gave us. Um, so Universe My Yard is a band that I have recently started listening to, and I'm just blown away by, I mean, of course, I'm a huge prog fan, of course, but um, yeah, the the level of instrumentation you guys have and just the co composition is amazing. But you guys have a new single coming out soon, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but uh, basically, since we are kind of a subsidiary of uh, Common Crusaders, we always like to start off talking about um, origin stories. So we'd love to learn about how Universe in My Yard came together. Okay. Uh, Universe in My Yard, born in uh, 2011 by the singer uh, Nicolò Alfei and uh, guitar player Mattia Toschi and other members on the band. They recorded an EP, uh, a demo, and they go on hiatus for internal problem. After a few years, uh, they decide to uh, restart with the project and try to uh, make a, a new level of metal and evolve the sound from the typical uh, 2000 metal core to something a little bit more complex. Uh, they found at the beginning the guitar player, Raffaele Sansone, that are even uh, the make programming and synth for the songs of the band. Uh, after that, uh, I was in contact with the singer Nicolò from years because we are fan of same bands and sometimes we uh, we see each other to, to the same live show. For example, Dillinger Escape Plane. We, we uh, every time Dillinger Escape Plane was in Italy, I saw his face. Uh, he see he saw my face, but <laughs> we don't know each other. So. Well, one day we talked to discuss, and uh, I he, he convinced me to enter into the band, and with uh, this uh, with this lineup without drummer because the drummer uh, leave leave Italy from uh, working reason, uh, we decided to record our debut album Holographic Sight in 2020. Uh, it should be a release party, a few lives, but pandemic, we, we know everyone what's happened. And so we decide to work again uh, on studio to write something new. And uh, the, the singer, Nicolò, suggests to take two old songs from the first uh, demo of uh, 2011 uh, and this, uh, we decide to rearrange that song. The first, the first was uh, "Creation is a Syndrome" that was released in uh, January. Uh, it's not, it's not was a, a rear, a total rearrangement. We make a more modern sound. We add some solo and we add all the orchestration parts. And after that, with the song that was more uh, digest from the new lineup was the new single lost redemption that was totally reinvented totally rebuilt in a new sound with the new idea and uh, with the, the concept that the band was metalcore metalcore is like our bones but now we have muscles we have tissues so we have mm -hmm. deathcore we have progressive we have a lot of we have jets we have another other stuffs and other sounds and the song will be released on September 9 and in a few months we start uh, to work uh, with a drummer Alessio Gentile that came into the band uh, uh, officially so we are working to uh, provo to to play in some place live as soon as possible amazing incredible and um and I have to ask too, since the, the band name Universe in My Yard is such a unique name, I'm wondering yeah. how, how that came to be. Okay, the name of the band was an idea of the guitar player Mattia, because Universe in My Yard, uh, it, both original members, Nicolò and Mattia, lives in this city with a lot of space for yards and for backyards. 
So the first uh, rehearsal was in the garage on a backyard. So the concept <laughs> was that the whole universe, the whole concept, the whole the creation happened in a yard. So okay. this is the, the idea behind the name Universe in My Yard. That's that's awesome. I was totally thinking it was something like just some kind of fantasy or like science fiction concept, but that's that's awesome. It has like no, actual, uh, no, know, no, real no, no, no. literal translation of for you guys. Yeah, listening. it's a little it's a little <laughs> translation of the name. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. All right, Caleb, I don't want to hog all the all the questions. I'll let you go. <laughs> Y'all, um, <clears throat> you are based in uh, Italy. Yeah, or... we are based in Bologna in the center of Italy. Okay. Um, so how do you say your band name in, in Italian? Uh, it literally, we can translate l'universo nel mio giardino. Ooh, that sounds like good. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, just what I was thinking about the whole time. I was like, no, I want to no. hear it in Italian. <laughs> do, not, do not worry. <laughs> what is the, uh, the metal scene like in, um, in Italy? Is it, I don't know. I've, I've been there once on vacation years ago, but of course that was not really like a full authentic experience. So I'm wondering what it's like over there musically. Oh, okay. We have few big name in Italy, uh, like um, Flash God Apocalypse, Lacuna Coil or Death Rage that are probably the, the biggest name came from Italy in the last 10 years. In the underground scene, it's alive but the problem is found a place where you can play because the local are are few and not always possible to play uh, to to play even if you have uh, really a, a live show there there is no uh, local that make you play or if you want to play you have just 10 minutes for example so oh, wow. yeah it's 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 quite normal here in italy have a live of 10 minutes quarter of hour not more than that and i know a lot of bands uh, of friends of different metal genres that are uh, very good like for example three different styles and nameless inertia are a gent band from uh, uh, a city near bologna uh, Constraint are symphonic metal and Rosanf are a very peculiar sound, uh, a, a strange mix between Pantera and Nano War of Steel uh, are amazing bands. Uh, they have incredible live show, but for pandemic, for other reason, and for all the problem on organization that we have in Italy, it's not so easy to play in uh, to play live so the scene that... is alive but it's complicated to show that it's alive <laughs> is it more of just necessarily where you're placed in Italy like maybe if you go further north or south like is there a region uh, uh, we are pretty lucky that we are uh, in north of Italy because I was born in the south of Italy and the situation is even worse in the south of Italy, you can not even have a location for miles and miles. Oh, wow. So I know bands oh. that for make just one show in Italy, they need to take the uh, plane and fly it to, uh, to the north of Italy just for one show. Wow. It's something that sadly happened, but I hope it's something, something seems it should be changed, but I hope just. Well, I mean, it, it, this type of stuff is helping like y'all getting your name out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that scene can grow. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. like the ones you named, like that should really help. And then that, so you're also y'all seeing in Italy should mm -hmm. definitely start spreading. I hope so. Cause I mean, you can't be flying. Sure, every time yeah <laughs> that's no. expensive that's i mean expensive. touring is already yeah. expensive yeah sure. yeah they're winning a ticket and then half your day <laughs> Yikes, yeah in italy it's pretty peculiar uh, even for uh, for the live show of big band that came in italy for a tour uh sometimes you take the ticket but the day before the show should be cancelled because the ticket sold was 
uh, too low. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Uh, and it's something that happened for the band that I love uh, too often. Uh, <laughs> because uh, so, so it's pretty complicated to explain the, the, music, the Italian music scene uh, in a few words. That's... We are working to evolve it, but actually <laughs> it's complicated to explain. What what is the like the prominent music scene for Italy? Ah, it's a little bit complicated to <laughs> to, to explain. I, I will try. I will try. The biggest problem is there are two big problems in the scene. Okay, the first is that when a band is when you make a band, you have no contact. So if you want to uh, play in some place, before to play, you need to have some contact on, solve, uh, on some location or other band that gave you the chance to open, to open that. And, and before you make all this contact, it's past years. Literally, Universe in My Yard was created in uh, 1211. The first real live show was in... Uh, uh, 2018, okay. after seven years of the creation of the band. Uh, and the, the, the second big problem is that there is, no, there is no place where you can play. There is no num... Sorry, a little bit tired. Uh, <laughs> there is no enough location as much band. Yeah. There are a lot of band. I'm here in Bologna that it's a typical uh, young city with a lot of students. There are the universe, one of the biggest universities in Italy, so it should be easy. It's not it's not so easy. If you if I want to play live with the band, I need to go in small city, in small location that have uh, uh, you need to, to book to play and maybe you I book today but I have the chance to play in 8 months this is the two biggest problem probably on the italian scene actually are in my saying, opinion clearly are you saying so like if you were playing pop or something else it'd be significantly easier to get a set somewhere versus no or just it's, music it's, in general it's music difficult. in general uh uh, in, in Italy, there is the concept that the music is not art, but it's a plus on your life. Hmm. It's not something important or something that you can make for a living. Actually, yeah. if, if you say uh, wh what you want to do when you grow up and you say, I'm a musician, uh, it, the typical answer is, no, 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 really. What you want to do <laughs> when you grow up, it's a typical answer. <laughs> So how, uh, what age did you decide that you wanted to do music? Were you always interested in it and had to, you know, listen to the naysayers? Mm, typically, uh, we, we grow up uh, like, uh, the, 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 uh, like a plan that you listen to a band and after that you listen and someone suggests a band a little bit smaller and after that you, uh, you listen another band a little bit smaller. Or maybe you can listen casually uh, a band that it's very enormous out mm -hmm. of Italy, but no one knows here in Italy. For example, I know that JJ, like me, loves them incredibly. The last show in Italy of Coed and Cambria in 2013, we was 60. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And the show before in Italy was cancelled because not enough ticket was sold. Oh man, that's wild. Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> well, because I'm just thinking about like my the area that like I work in Houston. There's there's like four or five stages just about mm -hmm. every other block where like there's always concerts going and stuff like that. And so I'm yeah. trying to like imagine like. Just being in a that type of environment of it's different yeah no, it's totally different it's it's another planet 
here. So what 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 inspired you to pick up the guitar, and you know what when abouts did you start your music journey? Uh, uh, I decided to start to play bass because uh, friends of mine played a played a guitar at, at school. Uh, at secondary school and say, okay, I play the guitar. I know a singer, I know a drummer. But why don't you play the bass? And they say, <laughs> okay. And I start my journey on this way. So after that, obviously my journey continues. My taste of music uh, evolved from uh, punk rock goes to the first metal you can listen so after the first punk rock band you say no 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 i need to play i need to play metallica it, it, it's necessary <laughs> for my life to play metallica so i start playing metallica and after that your your my, my journey into music evolved and continue until today and i hope ne it never will stop yeah yeah absolutely and it was interesting you were saying that um, Universe May Yard started off as a metalcore band, which I, I never would have guessed based on, um, <laughs> you know, listening to Holographic Sight. It's a, yeah. that's interesting. So what um, was it around the time that you joined the band that you guys kind of experimented with different genres and different sounds? Or was that always kind of a, an idea that okay. everyone had? Uh, when uh, I, I was hired to the band, uh, Raffaele was already hired. So probably Raffaele was the first uh, gear that moved the, okay. the sounds because Mattia Toschi, it's uh, the, 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 the founder, the guitar player founder of the band, really loved uh, all kinds of metalcore, um, modern and, two, and 2000 metalcore, a uh, fan of uh protest the hero but he really love even hardcore like strung out so in the first song of the band you can listen of these influences the singer nicolo loves everything is how to say uh all all the unknown metal core he loves i don't know how he could do but every time i talk to him he he took from the head a new band that I never <laughs> listened on my life. And this this is impressive. It's the, the most dark side of the metal core, like um, number 12 looks like you or the big Jets duo, just to example. <laughs> Raffaele was the first gear to change something because even uh, if uh, he loves a lot of, uh, of progressive metal like Animals as Leaders or Periphery, he listen a lot of acoustic music, electronic music, classical guitar. So its taste changed something. Uh, and when I arrived to the band, I probably gave the last uh, the last hammer to the, the evolution of the band because I love a lot of progressive. I uh, I really love Mastodon. I really love Coed and Cambria, uh, but I really love Genesis, for example. So the, the, the band evolved with us and with, with our taste. And everything we listen and we love was mixed perfectly into holographic sight. Because if you listen the album from the first song to the last song, you can listen metalcore, you can listen jets, you can listen acoustic parts, you can listen deathcore, you can listen uh, progressive, you can listen everything we love. That's awesome. Yeah, and the the jazz bits are something that really interest was really exciting for me to hear in the band. Like it'll have, you know, all the death core vocals and then you'll break into like a little yeah. a little jazz interlude, which I think is so cool. How did how did you guys get into the like jazz sections? Uh, all me and Raffaele love jazz. Uh, probably more Raffaele than me. Uh, I love the, the great bassist on Jets, like Marcus Miller, Jacob Astorius, and all of that, Victor Wood, and all of that. But probably one of the concepts that we have clear when we create something, it's, some, it's something that Devin Townsend one, one time says, that is, uh, if you write a riff and you think that it's metal, it's not necessary metal. Play <laughs> in all other genre, you know. Maybe uh, an, uh, the most uh, heaviest riff you wrote is uh, a bossa nova riff, or maybe it's a jazz riff. And 
and sometimes when we create it, we say, guys, we need a meta riff that should be perfect with the jet session. <laughs> so the, the, this is the idea behind all this change and all this evolution. Even the new song uh, have a, a blues part on the middle of the song uh, that was created on this way. And when we rearranged all the song, we say this part is perfect. We don't need to touch anything. It's <laughs> perfect in this way. So leave that. Awesome. I saw something recently about that too, where it was like metal. If you just take away the distortion of the guitar, it's just jazz. <laughs> and, yeah, and, it, it, and the time signatures and everything that's involved with jazz, like I can see it. It's it, it's a lot of there is a actually in 2022 there is a lot of jazz in metal. For example, Pliny. For example, intervals. Uh, for example, uh, animals as leaders have a lot of jet session in their song. Or uh, if you listen. Uh, Hushed and Grim, there are a lot of uh, jet session. Probably the first Mastodon Jets part was in the, <laughs> the Last Baron, and the middle part of the Last Baron is a, my a jet song. Favorite part. song by theirs, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the metal and jets are, fr are, are, are like friends that don't want to talk each other too much. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and so, yeah, talking about your guys' uh, new single, I was actually able to listen to the new single, even though it's not released yet. So I feel yeah. special. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's ex it's exciting. I love it. Um, it's called Lost Redemption, correct? Yes. Um, and I believe I think you sent us the um, the album artwork for that. Are we are we able to show that, or is that something you're kind of keeping secret until? No, until no, no, no. You can show you can show without any kind of problem the artwork. It was okay. made by a friend monica molini uh they get we gave their we gave her the lyrics and we say just this song talk about hope and redemption and okay. this is the cover art that that they made we are very proud of of this yeah, it's, cover art it's cool and um so you it's cool that you just kind of give the artist free reign on you know kind of totally. how to yeah totally Awesome. Um, and so in you, and that was another song you said was evolved from an original song yeah. from earlier in the band? Yes, it's uh, Creation is a Syndrome that was recorded and released on January 28 of 2022. Okay. And this is probably one of the, the, the mo it was not a total rearrange. We make more modern the sound we add a solo and we make all the orchestration because when we listen the mm -hmm. song as we said before as i said before when we listen the song one day we say guys we have an idea and if all these songs should have a structure with an orchestra with a 64 elements of orchestra they say okay and we <laughs> begin to work on that <laughs> and it it was really complicated because I am uh, I never study music. I don't know anything about music theory. So arrange and compose all the orchestration without any idea of musical theory. It was a wow. little bit complicated. Yeah, how long did that take? I can't imagine that would be a eight months. Eight months. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know where you'd even begin with composing, or like <laughs> I mean, I know nothing about music first of all. But like, <laughs> and what do you say, sixty-four instruments? Yeah, a sixty-four orchestra instrument. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's that's crazy. Hold on one sec. Oh. All right. And so, when it comes to composing lyrics, do you do you write um, much? Like, who do you all share kind of um, responsibility yeah. for writing lyrics? Yeah. And no, the lyrics is a total responsibility of Nick. Okay. Maybe we create a song with an idea. For example, on holographic sites, the last song, Imagine Your Life as a Palindrome, was gave to Nick all the structure, all the biggest idea from uh, Mattia. And he said to him, this song, on my opinion, should talk about 
uh, a recursive sense of life and uh, that in any point of view you stop your life and you see on the future and on the past is totally symmetrical so this is was the idea and so Nicolò wrote all the lyrics for the music parts instead uh, we have two two way to compose one is that one on the band should be uh, for example actually uh, the drummer Alessio g- gave us some riff uh, and we begin to build something from that riff or maybe I wrote something and I give you the skeleton of the song. And after that, we build the, re- the rest all together. Even with Nick, that even if don't play any instrument, uh, he knows how to play a guitar. He knows how to play the bass. He knows how to play the synth. So I can give a lot of ideas in uh, com- composing moments. Huh. And you all live kind of close together in Italy where you're able to be in one room? Yeah. Or is this... okay. yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. are on uh, 20 kilometers. I don't know how many miles okay. are. M- maybe 14 miles, something like that. Okay. We are one time per week, one time for two week. We we see all together to to play and compose something new. Awesome. Yeah, I know some bands are far apart and they have to write songs kind of like through the internet and you know that yeah. that would be more complicated, especially if you're adding or- orchestra bits in there too. It just adds more <laughs> complication. So. Okay, Caleb, I'm sorry. I feel like I've been talking a lot, so I'll let you jump in. You actually covered what I was wondering. <laughs> Did anyway, I steal so all your good. questions? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, do you have any, well, I guess if you're not doing a whole bunch of shows, but any anything you, any pre-game rituals or anything before you perform? Uh, actually, no. We we should have. I hope understand right the question. We should have one show in one month, but I have a little uh, a surgery on my elbow, so for one month I will be a KO. So th- this was we we sadly say no to this possibility, but we hope in November or December playing some live show. Oh, yeah, I hope sure. understand right the question, Caleb. Sorry if I. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, like if so, in the future, you know, once you do live shows and everything, let's say, you know, what what would be the band that you you know like your dream band to uh, yeah. to open for or tour with? Everyone on the band could give you a different answer. <laughs> because I bet, yeah. for for one should be suicide silence for another one should be protest the hero for me mastodon for another one should be periphery for another one should be <laughs> animals as leaders okay. if 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 i need to say a band that represent our gen our musical genre that should be an honor to open to i will say arch spire Solid because, band. Yeah. <laughs> the I band already the opened it, already opened it to Beyond Creation in 2018. Mm. And we hope to yeah, Arch Spy should be a, a good choice for everyone, probably. <laughs> yeah, I can see but, that absolutely. Beyond Creation as well, too. Like that. Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. Where 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 is periphery from? Periphery, it's mm-hmm. from uh, Ha. Because uh, I've seen not, them. It's not from Ver- Vermont. No, it's a, it's a state on the East Coast, I suppose. About to, about to look it up. <laughs> it's from Bet- Maryland. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bet- Washington, D.C. Did you think they were Italian? Well, he said it twice, and so I was like, Is it Italian? <laughs> Italian? Like, I'm trying to remember because it was like 20 no, no, no. I think when I saw him. I was like, Man, I don't know. I don't know if they're, I don't remember them saying they're Italian. <laughs> no, no. They're uh, from US. It makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> I got excited for a moment, though. I was like, Maybe one got across. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, for anyone watching, um, we have um, Universe My Yards. All their links are, I think we're throwing them up on here, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Um, and they've got a awesome YouTube channel where you guys do a bunch of uh, playthroughs on there too, which are fun to watch. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone go check them out. And also um, it is September 9th, correct? For the new season? Yes, yes, September absolutely. 9th. Yes. yes. And yes, I've already listened to it. I feel special. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. Um, if you anyone watching who enjoys metal and like all the genres you mentioned, metalcore, deathcore, um, progressive metal, jazz, you know, and it's it encompasses a large, you know, genre yeah. of interests and everything. So, um, yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Did you have any um, last things you wanted to mention or talk about or? No, no, I just want to say thank you to you and to the chance to talk about our music and talk about our new release and we are happy as bands to have this chance and uh, we hope that the new, you should like the new song like we like so <laughs> absolutely yeah caleb did you have any closing things any last minute questions <clears throat> um you have any intent on making vinyls or any any uh, it's uh, we are thinking to do we are thinking to do a special print for holographic site with this tune song as bonus track oh, cool. uh, we are trying to understand if uh, it's economically uh, how to say mm -hmm. uh, if uh, uh, it's a, a cost a normal cost for a vinyl because I we, we are actually we are looking for someone that prints in italy so we have a price but we want to look outside of italy for the price because in italy there are the taxation the music we you need to pay the the royalties when you print something and it's a it's a little bit expensive just one vinyl so that, we hope yeah. we hope Cool. Oh, I had um, one last question too. So yes. um, since I'm such a huge fan of concept albums, I was just curious if you guys ever had any talked about or thought about ever writing a concept album. We could guarantee that the next album will be a concept. Yes. We, <laughs> we have three, four ideas we are talking about from something more uh realistic from something more uh, uh sci-fi we mm -hmm. have a few ideas when we decide okay guys this is the moment when we start again to write music we will decide the idea of the concept and we will work to create one it, it should be not easy i already know yeah. it, oh, should, yeah. it should I... be a nightmare I yeah I can't I hear a lot it's it's first of all it's difficult and then um a lot of bands don't do it too because a lot of the fans don't even realize that it's a concept album so I yeah. I understand that it's a, a huge undertaking and it's definitely yeah. not easy but um uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to that that is exciting I don't understand how some band could be concept album for for me it's <laughs> actually unthinkable how there is all the Emory Wars all the elements concept for Mastodon, mm -hmm. uh, Automata part one, part two from Between the Bird and Me, all yeah. the Genesis album, our concept album, for me is unthinkable because <laughs> how can explain a story in eight, ten song? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Tommaso, for coming on the show with us. Um, thank you and too. I know it's very late for you over there, so I don't want to yeah. want to keep you up any later than you need to be. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was fantastic to talk to you, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank yeah, everyone too. watching, uh, make sure you go check out uh, Lost Redemption on the ninth when it comes out. Bye bye.